Hi, I'm Educator Barnes, and I'm the CEO and co-founder of Brave Brothers Books. And the first two books that we published were by my sons, Jeremiah Barnes and James Barnes. And over the progression of this video, you're going to see them morph from being elementary students all the way up to middle school students now. Uh, you'll hear them reading their books shortly after they were published, and then you'll hear from them when they are older. And I guess if your mom was an English teacher, literacy coach, school librarian, you probably feel like you're destined to read and to write. Hope you enjoy this video. The next day, mom and dad woke us up and said it was time to explore. We got lost again and mom was frustrated again. Dad was not listening to her directions. After driving to Gatlinburg from our cabin, we had to find a place to park. The parking machine was having problems and wasn't taking payment from credit or debit cards. A lot of adults looked mad and Dad was one of them. He did not have cash. James and I had money. We had our birthday party a month before the trip and Mom and Dad said we could bring our money to buy stuff. Dad came back to the SUV and said, let me have your birthday money back. Then he took some of our cash. My brother crossed his arms and said, no fair. Dad replies, life is not fair. Hi, my name is James Barnes, and if you like scary stories, you can buy my book. First, I'm going to read chapter one. The shadow ghost was waiting. It was looking for a body to possess. Chapter one, Curtis, Jared, and Nick were at the twins' house like they were most friends. Curtis and Jared's mom didn't work, which made, it, which made it a great place to hang out. However, this autumn Friday wasn't like the, like most Fridays. The boys were playing a video game when their phones suddenly all started vibrating at the same time. I just got the weirdest text, Curtis said, showing, showing his phone's, phone to his friends. Nick looked at Jared's phone and then replied, ours too. We're all in a group text, but who sent this message? The text said, I need help. Please meet me at the hill last night. What time is that? Who says we got sunset, Jared asked. Couldn't this person just give us a real time like 9 p.m.? Whoa, hold up, said Nick. Who cares about the time? The question is, should we even go? I don't think we should go. Remember stranger danger? We have no idea who this is. I think we should go and find out what is going on, Curtis said. What's the harm? Yeah, Jared chimed in. You could just go there. There probably won't even be anyone there. It's... I bet it's a joke. We can go check it out and and then come back. Ever since they turned 10, the boys' parents had been giving them a lot more freedom to go out, out on their own as long as they knew where the boys were going. Text your mom and Nick Jerry says, Curtis, I'll tell our mom and then we can, then we can go. Nick sighed, he didn't want to go to the hill, but majority rule, as always. Since the two out of three of them wanted to, to go, they went, majority rule. That's how they decided everything. It had been that way since Nick had moved into their neighborhood. When they were eight, back then, Curtis and Jared had only played with each other. Their parents wanted them to make at least one friend, so when they moved to the neighborhood, they could encourage the boys to reach out to him. 
the twins had ignored their parents advice at first then one day when they were walking home from school they saw nick walking behind them all alone do you know why people eat ketchup when they have a race jerry had called out confused nick had looked at the brothers i don't know why he he dashed so so they can catch up and win jared had said with a chuckle get it catch up catch up Nick had stared blankly and then started laughing. Oh, come on, Curtis said. That's so lame. Jared shook his head. I think it's funny. Not Nick thinks it's funny. That's two against one. Not lame. Funny. Major majority rules. That has they'd broken the ice. Since that day, they'd been inseparable. Now, two years later, they're headed out to find the source of a mysterious text. Bye, everybody. I hope you liked chapter one. Hey, it's Educator Barnes, and I am here with two special guests, James Barnes and Jeremiah Barnes. And what's special to uh, me about these particular guests, they are my sons, uh, my identical twin sons who are going to be 12 next month. But a few years ago, when they were younger, they became published authors. Jeremiah published his book first when he was in second grade, but you actually wrote your book when? First grade. In first grade. And then James, your book was published in third grade, but you wrote your book the year before in second grade. So years later, you uh, all have read your books, in different schools, you read your book at the public library, at different events, after school events, your books are going into the Indianapolis Public Libraries. There's been teachers across the United States that use your books. Jeremiah, your book was on the um, Pragmatic Moms Appalachian list. You got to participate in Multicultural Children's Book Day. And so now we have fast forward to now you're in middle school how do you guys feel about being a book author years later? Um, I feel proud that I made a book and I enjoy looking at the cover. What do you like about your cover? Um, I like the art style of the characters and uh, the background. So your book is Ghost Text and your book is a mystery book um, what is the premise of your book? Um, the book is about some friends who find a ghost who takes over um, one of their other friends' bodies and they have to save them. And how is this ghost communicating with them? Uh, through te text messages. Through text messages, hence the name Ghost Text. And then Jeremiah, you wrote a nonfiction book. Um, and what is your nonfiction book about? It's about when we went, uh, when I was in first grade, when we went to the Smoky Mountains for a vacation. Right, so this is a real life family vacation with all the ups and the down and the joy. And the really cool thing about this book is that it uh, includes your photographs, uh, your brother's photographs, even your parents' photographs in this book that helps come along to bring your narrative um, to a close. If there are students out there watching right now who say, I want to be an author, what advice do you have for them? Um, uh, if you make a mistake, just keep going. Because eventually you'll make a book like this or even better. James? Uh, hmm. Keep writing and reading more books so you know what to put in your own. Right, because um, as you guys know, but maybe you don't know, I was an English teacher and a literacy coach, and that's the advice I give to people. Good writers are people who read. Well, James, Jeremiah, do you plan to write more books in the future? Yes. Mm -hmm. And James, you have a, uh, a special skill. You also illustrate um, yourself. Do you hope to uh, illustrate one of your own books one day? Mm -hmm. All right, so we'll have to stay tuned for that. 
Well, thank you so much for agreeing to this interview and hopefully you inspire some kids out there to take what they've written and make a book that can be published. Before this video wraps up, I wanted to leave you all with some final thoughts. Keep Indiana Learning's theme for World Read Aloud Day is find your spark. And when I think about find your spark when it comes to reading, it's about finding that topic, that subject area, that genre that you like, that inspires you to want to sit down and either listen to a book or read the book to yourself. Years ago, when I was a school librarian, I found this note on my desk and I'll read it to you. Dear Mrs. Barnes, for Teacher Appreciation Week, I would like to thank you for the lessons you have been teaching me in the library. Before I came to this school, I wasn't really that reading type. But when I came to this school and to specials class, I became interested in reading more books. Thanks to your teacher's page, I read a lot of scary books and I like writing stories. I would just like to thank you once more. Now as a teacher, anytime a kid writes me a letter, leaves me a note, draws a picture of myself, and I love it when you guys draw me taller than five foot two, that's awesome, I keep them. But well, that one made the top of my list because when I met this student, this student pretty much told me I don't read, I don't like reading, and you're not gonna find anything that I like. And I made it my personal mission as many students I've had over the years, I made it my personal mission to find something that they like. So if you're sitting in your classroom right now and you're thinking to yourself, I don't like books, I don't like reading, reading's not fun, trust me, there is somebody out there, whether it's your classmate or your teacher, that can help you find your spark, help you find a book that fits you. And when I tell students to read, read things that you like. So if you're reading a magazine, you're reading. If you're reading a comic book, you're reading. If you're reading a graphic novel, you're reading. If you're sitting here in high school English class right now and you like to look through picture books because all picture books are not geared towards elementary students. There are picture books for grown up. Um, if you ever go into maybe an adult's house and you see those big old books that are picture books on table, even grown-ups have picture books in their house for their coffee table. Now, some people have them for decoration, but I actually read mine. Um, but they're for everybody. And if you're listening to a book on audio, because I love listening to books on audio, you are still participating in reading. So don't let anybody make you feel that whatever type of thing you like to read isn't good enough, that it doesn't count. Uh, when kids don't have their spark, most of the time it's because someone put the spark out and I'm here to light your spark again. So find someone, whether it's your teacher, whether it's a parent, a guardian, a family member, find someone, tell them that you maybe don't like to read, but you want to find something that you enjoy reading. So thanks for listening to uh, Jeremiah and James read excerpts of their books. And you can find out more about them and other authors we are publishing because our publishing company started in 2019. And then that thing called the pandemic happened. So we are like hitting the ground running and we have so many authors coming out this year. So uh, just keep following us. And if we're not the place for you to find a book, trust me, there's somebody out there somewhere that has written a book that is just for you.